everyone and welcome to episode 8 of Mel Goes Wild. These next series of videos are entitled Happy Campers and as you guessed it, it's all about camping. This specific episode is all about sleeping bags. If you found yourself shivering your timbers late at night, then chances are you're not using the correct camping gear for the time of year. The right gear can make all the difference to a blissful night's sleep in the outdoors. You want a bag that will keep you comfortable and help regulate your temperature at night. Whether you're camping in the summer or planning a winter adventure, it all starts with selecting the right sleeping bag. Before we begin, I need you to ask yourself three questions. The first question is, what type of camping are you planning on doing? So are you gonna be doing car camping? Are you going to be doing multi-day trips? Are you going to be doing weekend camping trips? Second question is, what time of year are you planning on camping? So summertime, winter time, or are you kind of planning on wanting to camp throughout the year? And lastly, what is your budget? Once you answer these three questions, it should kind of give you a better idea as to what type of sleeping bag is best suited to your type of camping. So how are sleeping bags rated? In 2005, a European standard was actually introduced. The EN 13537 was designed to regulate the temperature ratings of sleeping bags across the industry. These ratings kind of tell you how the sleeping bag should perform in conditions like the outside temperature. There are generally two ratings used for sleeping bags. When you go shopping for your sleeping bag, stores will rate their sleeping bags by season and or comfort rating. Let me first explain season ratings. So a season rating is used to inform buyers of the time of year a sleeping bag is most suitable for. Ratings start from season one, which are for summer months, all the way up to season five, which are for extreme cold, kind of ex expedition adventures for temperatures often as low as minus 40. So season one, or your summer sleeping bag, summer sleeping bags are designed for camping on warm summer nights, which are obviously few and far between in Ireland. These bags are lightweight because of less insulation. Because of this, they do pack down super small, but won't be suitable for camping adventures in colder conditions. Then you have your three season. A three season bag is by far the most versatile and will serve you well for most camping adventures in Ireland in autumn and winter. A good three season bag will have added features, but more on sleeping bag features later in the episode. Lastly, you have your winter bags. Winter bags are for use on cold winter nights where there may be frost or snow on the ground. They have all the features of your three season and then some. They are usually bulked up with more insulation. Winter bags are bigger in size, making it bulkier to pack. My recommendation is to buy a good compression stuff sack to reduce its size. Comfort or temperature ratings. What are they? So every sleeping bag has a temperature rating. The rating is an important factor to consider as it will indicate what temperature you are comfortable sleeping in. Similar to this graphic, temperature or comfort ratings will be expressed in comfort, lower limit and extreme. To explain a little more about the different temperature ratings. Comfort, the temperature at which the average adult woman can expect to have a comfortable sleep. Lower limit, the temperature at which the average adult male can expect to have a good night's sleep in a curled position. Extreme, the lowest temperature at which the average adult woman can survive. So when you're choosing your sleeping bag, the comfort level is the one to look out for. This tells you the optimum temperature before you start to feel cold. On average, women feel the cold more than men, so this rating is some degrees above the comfort limit for a man. Okay, are you still following me? <laughs> Here's a helpful graphic to explain each temperature rating for each season. If you have a sleeping bag already, go get it. There is a temperature rating on the inside of your sleeping bag and it will look something like this one in the video here. So a little bit of homework for you. What is the comfort rating of your sleeping bag? From this, can you tell me what season rating your bag is? Is it summer, three season, winter or extreme? If you realize your bag has a summer temperature rating, but you use it for winter camping trips, then it will probably explain why you feel like this. Just to note, women's specific sleeping bags are often wider around the hips, narrower around the shoulders and with extra insulation at the feet. So the fit and shape of your sleeping bag. Did you know that sleeping bags are actually sized by their length? So it's kind of important that you're getting the right sized sleeping bag for your height. So for me, I am five foot five. I like to tell people I'm five six. I'm more like five four. So for me, I need to get a sleeping bag for my height and it's usually a size small. You want the length of your sleeping bag to basically directly correlate with your height. 
So there are actually a few different shapes of sleeping bags to look out for. You have your rectangular, you have your semi-rectangular, you have your mummy, and then you have double sleeping bags, and then you have kids sleeping bags. So your rectangular sleeping bag is usually your basic sleeping bag shape. They offer more space and can be unzipped to make a duvet or blanket. Because of this, they are less effective at retaining heat and not ideal for winter camping. Semi-rectangular, also known as a modified mummy or barrel shape, all of which offer a compromise between warmth and roominess. Mummy shape is a more snug sleeping bag and provides a closer fit because of this, it's better at retaining heat. Double sleeping bags. Bags made for two are the best for couples who plan to sleep together. Another option is to choose a rectangular bag designed for zipping together. The bags need to be the same model and brand. A few bags can be zipped together if one person chooses a right hand zip and the other a left hand zip. And lastly, kid size sleeping bags. These are basically shorter, smaller and more affordable versions of adult sleeping bags. There's a few key pointers to look out for to make sure the sleeping bag is actually the right fit for you. So like hiking boots and backpacks, try your sleeping bag on for size. A good Irish owned outdoor store will actually allow you to crawl into as many bags as you wish before buying. While you're inside the bag, check all the zippers and buttons. You don't want to have them snagging. Also use the features like the hood and draft collar, cinch them in, get acquainted with your bag before you buy. You want to be cozy and comfy. So your insulation or your fill type. Your sleeping bag is made up of one of two different types of insulation and that's either down or synthetic. Down sleeping bags are filled with goose or duck feathers and there are pros and cons to each which I've listed below. Synthetic sleeping bags are filled with man-made fibers and the same as down, there are also pros and cons which I've listed below. The weight and size of your sleeping bag is something to take into consideration. As you can see, there is a sizable difference between the synthetic summer sleeping bag in green on the left and my winter season downfill sleeping bag on the far right and then my summer downfill sleeping bag in the middle. You want a bag that combines low weight and high warmth. When you're in store, ask to see how small it packs down in a compression sack. This is especially important if you plan to fit your sleeping bag into a backpack and will be carrying the bag for long distances on multi-day trips. Some other important things to remember. Ethical down. Most brands take steps to monitor the treatment of ducks and geese that provide down. You can identify a bag from one of the, those manufacturers when you see it labeled as either RDS, which is Responsible Down Standard, or TDS, Global Traceable Down Standard. Also, your sleeping bag's shell. The outer fabric or shell of your bag is important when it comes to water resistance and durability. Some manufacturers may apply a DWR, durable water repellent finish, to help the bag further resist water or other repellent technologies. When choosing your sleeping bag, look out for these features as it will help improve the comfort of your camping experience. Two-way zips are useful for easy opening and to adjust for ventilation. Two-way zips can also be used to create a double sleeping bag if you buy two of the same style and zip both together. Stash pocket. A few bags offer a handy zippered stash pocket. These are handy for keeping valuables such as wallets and phones and snacks. Zip cover. A zip cover, the piece of fabric that is normally fastened with Velcro, covers the zip when the bag is fully zipped, helping to prevent the zip coming undone when sleeping. Draft collar. An insulated draft collar helps to stop body heat escaping from the bag and keeps out the cold around neck and shoulders. Most draft collars will have an adjustable draw cord to tighten if necessary. Zip baffle. Heat can be lost through zippers so an insulated zip baffle helps in reducing heat loss and keeping out drafts. Sleeping bag hood. Much of your body heat is lost through your noggin so a snug fitted hood can make a bag much warmer. A draw cord closure allows you to pull the hood tight against your face for added warmth. Baffles. Baffles are the compartment in a sleeping bag that hold the filling so it's evenly distributed. <music> stuff sacks and compression sacks. Sleeping bags usually come with a stuff sack with a drawstring closure. A stuff sack enables you to stuff your bag into the sack to make it smaller and maximize on the space in your backpack. A compression sack is similar, except it can compress bulky items like a down sleeping bag to almost a third of their size with the help of compression straps. My top tip this week. 
Instead of packing a travel pillow for your adventures, use your stuff sack. This is perfect when space is limited in your backpack and you want to keep your gear light. Get your stuff sack, grab your insulating layer and jacket, stuff it in and voila, a pillow. Also, as an additional layer of waterproof protection when I'm out on my adventures, I store my sleeping bag in a dry bag to make sure it's protected against a downpour. What you do not want is a wet sleeping bag at the end of your day. Storing and caring for your bag. Your storage sack. Leaving a bag permanently smushed inside its stuff sack is hard on the insulation, so a lot of bags also come with a large mesh or cotton storage sack for long-term storage. This is how I store mine at home when I'm not out camping. Ask the staff when buying how best to store your sleeping bag. This will prolong the life of your sleeping bag. How you clean your bag will depend on whether it's synthetic or down, so make sure to read the care labels on your bag before cleaning. Alternatively, ask the staff in the store how best to care and clean your bag. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you learned something new. And if you did, all I ask is that you subscribe to the channel, like this episode, or if you have any further questions or love, just drop them in the comments below. If you enjoy and find these videos helpful in any way, you can choose to support me by becoming a patron. If you would like to become a patron, then head to my page at patreon.com forward slash gals gone wild with an underscore at the end. You can also find me and our Gals Gone Wild community on Instagram. You can contact me for partnerships or if you have any questions, please do email me at mel at galsgonewild.com. And you can see more of what Gals Gone Wild is all about on our website, galsgonewild.com. And until next week, make sure to get outdoors and go wild.